ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮಶ್ರು ಆಮೆ ಎನ್ ಎಲ್ ಪಿ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಷ್ನರು ಗತ ಪದ್ದೆಮ್ದಿ ಸಂಸ್ಥರಾಲ್ಗಾ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟ್ ಟ್ರೇನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ನರು ಆಮೆ ಜಿಇಲು ಎವೈವಾಲು ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟ್ ಟ್ರೇನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ಗಾ ಕಂಡಕ್ಟ್ ಎಸ್ಸು ಉಂಟರು ಬ್ರಿಟಿಷ್ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ಲ ಕೂಡ ಮಕ್ಕೆ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಉಂದಿ ಅಕ್ಕಡ ಕೂಡ ಮೆ ಟ್ರೇನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಎಸ್ಸು ಉಂಟರು ಇಪ್ಪುಡ ಆಮೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮುಂದು ತನ್ನ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ವಸಂಗ ಕೋರ್ತನಾನು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಶ್ರುತಿ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಐ ಹೋಲ್ ಹಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ಲಿ mean to say thank you it is not easy to be seated from morning to evening here especially in three consecutive days it is not easy to be missing college and coming here so a big thank you to all of you and a very big thank you to mr gampa nageshwar rao he's been a source of inspiration to many many countless people here in hyderabad and pan india uh, impact has been a wonderful program it is a, a wonderful program and continues to be thank you so much for inviting me here sir um this reminds me some time back my friend had flown from australia and uh, that was a time when this famous movie was released which was the best movie last year that was released which was the best movie bahubali, bahubali. yes it was now to my good luck and bad luck i don't understand telugu okay yeah you're laughing at me yes i don't understand telugu i am in hyderabad for many many years but sadly i don't understand telugu so i don't watch telugu movies but then my friends who flown from uh, sydney they were very keen because bahubali was just released i somehow managed to get tickets for them and uh, sadly i could not understand what was happening so i had one friend on my left and the other on my right kept asking them what is he saying what is he doing what's happening and every time they had to translate so all in all maybe i didn't understand the movie as you did but then somewhere down the line i understood the movie a little different than you did So today I'm going to share with you the movie that I understood. Are you game for it? Are you game for it? That's much better. You don't have a choice, do you? Yeah, sadly, post lunch you have to tolerate me, but that's what it is. So tolerate me while I'm here and bear with me. Let's see if you by the end of this session understand the movie from my perspective. So, before we get into that, uh one question how many of you eat popcorn okay even i love popcorn have you ever seen a popcorn pop okay the cones are thrown in the hot hot bowl all cones are set at one time but not every corn pops at the same time have you seen that there is first corn that pops a pop then there is another one pop then there is pop 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 and then it starts popping all of them pop a little differently at different times the same is the scenario here when i stand here and i look at you people i know each one of you is not going to understand what i'm going to say now each one of you are going to understand it a little differently at a little different time at a little different variation so if you have understood and if your popcorn has popped feel free to clap don't look left don't look right this is not bahubali and you are not shruti So every time the popcorn pops and you are in sync with me clap so i know you are understanding and you're not shruti are we game for it okay we have wonderful speakers today and i'm sure the other days who came in who spoke really really well they have shared with you a lot of success mantras here is my story and my way of looking at it i call it steps to success success could be in any form i mean a lot of people believe that success is money a lot of people see success as affiliation a lot of people see success when a huge crowd like this clap for them they feel they are really successful but then success means different thing to different people today we are going to talk about entrepreneurship steps to being a successful entrepreneur very very simple i learned this you know when when i was watching bahubali 
And that is why I said that movie inspired me. It inspired me in a different way. And I'm going to relate this with Bahubali. Now, I remember when the movie started, there was a small little boy who used to ask his mother every time, Mom, what's up there? Did he ask? Every time he says, Mom, what's up there? Why was he asking? Why was he asking? Sorry? Curiosity. Who said that? Bang on. He was very curious. He kept asking, what's up there? If he was not curious, he would not be the hero of the movie. As simple as that. For you or me to be a successful entrepreneur, the first and the foremost eminent spec that we need to take forward is be curious. Be curious about what are the opportunities available, what's happening in the market, who are the players, what is it that they are missing, what is it that I can do, where can I fit in, do I fit in in the first place. Okay, one has to be very, very curious. They have to think differently. Only curiosity can lead to a great entrepreneur. Otherwise, we always have people who take command and will do things for us. Don't they? Even the Tatas, the Birlas, the Ambanis have the best of the best. Stanford, Oxford, Harvard and IIMs recruited. They take the command from them. They execute it, don't they? Yes, but then they are not curious. They just take command, they execute. The difference between the Ambani, the Tata, the Birla, and their employees is that those are in a different league altogether. They are curious. They are curious for various things, not just knowing what's up there. They also know and try and figure out how to reach up there. Do you agree with me? So there, this is that boy that I was referring to that, you know, keeps asking his mother, mom, what's up there? He was curious and that curiosity led him as a hero. The next question that comes to my mind is that, What is the second step? Once you are curious, you know that, you know, there are so many opportunities here. The whole game, like Sri Ram said, it's a game. The whole game is understanding where do you fit in? There is room for everybody. Trust me, friends. The world is large enough. The economy is large enough. The opportunities are those many that there is room for everybody. All you should know is where do you fit in? What is that one thing that I can do that will change my life, that will change my society, that will change my country on the whole? Because unless you have a bigger vision and you're only thinking about making money, while well, making money, big deal, anybody can make a money. Correct? We have seen N number of movies. Have we not seen other movies where there are gangsters? Pick up one gun, tsh, isn't that good deal of money? But is that what, what we are looking for? We are not looking for that kind of money. We are looking to bringing about a change, a change in ourselves, in our society, in our community, and in our nation on the whole. So when we look for those opportunities, we calculate. A lot of times people come back to me saying that, ma'am, I come from a very, very typical conventional family where everybody has been in very, very good positions, in very, very good companies. Entrepreneurship scares me. They say entrepreneurship scares me and it scares my parents a lot. The minute I say I want to do something different, they say, no, sit down. We are, we are not that league. Is that true? Are we born different from the Ambanis or the Birlas or the Tatas? Are we any different at all? We have the same two eyes, same nose, same ears, same throat, same brains, same hands, same passion. Indeed, we have all that passion. All we don't have, or rather we have in addition to what the Ambanis had, is that we have people who tell us, no, 
you can do that every time you try to do something they'll say no that's not what we are we don't do that have you heard of the story of the eagle a, a eagle's egg was laid in a nest and that was hatched by hen so that eagle that was hatched remained on the surface of the ground and never flew like an eagle eagle is born to fly high it is supposed to soar great heights but it didn't simply because it was with the hen people told him that no you are one amongst us you are not meant for the sky those are eagles that fly that high we are supposed to be on the ground every time you have a new idea and you discuss it with your friends the first thing they do is laugh at you trust me the louder the laugh the stronger should be your path that was my mantra people laughed at me when i said i've been working i have worked about 12 years in multinational companies i was in a very good position i was one of the best trainers sought after trainers in my company and they thought i was indispensable but when i said i want to leave that and i want to be a trainer on my own they laughed and they said are you kidding nlp what is nlp supposed to be i said neuro linguistic programming they said so you are going to do some programming now little they understood that software programming and neuro linguistic programming are two different things who do i talk to how i do i talk to those who don't even understand they told me no you don't and that was one reason why i said yes i will every time people tell you don't do that that means you are on the right track it is just that they are not used to taking risks people say business is risk a lot of risk indeed it is risk indeed it is risk no doubt about it so like shri ram very rightly said if you want to play safe stay at the banks of the river stay outside the court and clap for the winners there are risks involved but it is definitely not gambling business is not gambling it is calculated risk every move that you take every move that you take is calculated you do your research you do your survey you know the market you know the opportunities you also do your own swot analysis you know what your strengths are you capitalize on those strengths as simple as that now there are some weaknesses that each one of us have even god when he took they say even when god came down to earth as a human he also had weaknesses because he was to, supposed to live the life of a human and human are supposed to have weaknesses so what if you and i have weaknesses people say you should get over weaknesses can you get over weaknesses overnight no trust me even today if somebody tells me to make something on uh, let's say an excel sheet every time i have to send a report to my client on excel sheet i'm like oh my god there shruti you go again it's so difficult a simple excel sheet half of you must be laughing at me you must be saying what kind of a trainer are you you don't know excel sheet it's a child's play but yes i don't know big deal so what if i don't know one i learned the basics of it so i can fairly manage something that you do in about half an hour's time i may take 3 hours to do but i do it so yes i don't give up that easily but second thing there is something called hiring help why should i break my head with an excel sheet that i don't enjoy i'll rather make some good modules i'll rather create something new i rather do some business development i will focus on the areas that i have my core competency in and i can leave my weaknesses for others to fill the gap as simple as that so there is always your strength your competency that you work on and there are always those weaknesses that you try to either get over and till the time that you're trying to get over you hire help alternatively you collaborate the best way to kill competition is 
collaboration. This is the biggest mantra that I have learned in my 18 years of work experience. There is nothing called competition. As such, we have enough for everybody. As such, there is no, no other Sruti Mashru. Sruti Mashru is different from others. And likewise, every trainer is different from one another. But if you still feel that, you know, there is a threat, the best thing is collaborate. You have your share, I have my share, win-win. What more can we ask for? Simple example, as a trainer, I get a lot of queries for voice and accent training. Now, I'm not a voice and accent trainer. I have my friends who are good in voice and accent training. Very simple, I collaborate with them. So is there a competition? No, there's no competition. Competition is killed automatically. My weakness that I don't know voice and accent. Is there any more my weakness? No, taken care of because I have people who will do that. So that way I grow, my friend grow, my company grows and even my client is happy because they don't have to deal with so many different vendors. That makes everybody's life simple. So when we speak about Bahubali, you know, when the war was happening, I'm told that the enemies had like one lakh people. That was their force. Is that true? Is that true? And how much you think was the force of our hero? 25,000, correct? Yes, exactly 25% of what the competitor had. So does that mean that he gets scared? Did he actually get scared? Did he lose the battle? Did he lose the hope? No. What he did was the same calculation. He understood what his strengths are. If I understand correctly, his uncle was very mean in that movie. Is that right? Is that right? Very conveniently, he gave the best of the best weapons to the other guy. Simply because he was a little biased on that. Did that stop our hero from going ahead? Did that stop our hero from winning? No. Rather than fighting for what was a waste of time, what he did was he capitalized on what he had. The smartest thing that he did, which I have never seen ever before, was he won the battle. Half the battle was won with curtains. Can you beat that? Do we remember how he pulls out all the curtains and then he throws it on the enemies? He killed half the army with those curtains. That is exactly what happens in our day-to-day -day life, friends. If you want to be an entrepreneur, half the time you will think, oh my God, others have so much, so many years of experience, so much of bank balance, so much of support system, so much of an exposure, so much of support from the family and here I am I have nothing now should that stop you the answer is no life you get only once and it is worth living give it a shot if you feel that you can be an entrepreneur give it a shot what's the maximum that you can lose be prepared for the worst Whatever comes is any which way is better than what you thought it will be. Am I right? If you are prepared for the worst thing worst, what is it the worst thing that can happen to you? You may not succeed. You may have to close down the business. That's about it. Nobody's going to kill you. Correct? Life still continues. You can always go back to a job. Then why not try? Why should we limit our options and think, Oh my God, I don't come from that family. Oh my God, my family does not support. Oh my God, my father is far more experienced than I am. And if he says I cannot be an entrepreneur, then I cannot be an entrepreneur. Did you hear the laughter on my friend's face when I said I want to be an entrepreneur? Oh my God, I cannot take this embarrassment. A lot of time, people give up even before trying. I tell those people, giving up is not an option. It is never an option. Try. It is really worth trying. That guy, 
the hero in bahubali he had very very limited sources but he calculated he had a plan chalked out and just at the right time with his available resources the kind of coordination that he had at one signal from him all those red curtains were thrown on the enemy and half the enemy was destroyed yeah popcorn phuta sometimes we think we really need to be very technical we have to go to iits iims to be great to be successful fyi there are more successful people who come from the other part of the world those are only handful you have to understand what your resources are in those given resources what is the best you can do trust me each one of us is gifted with a brain is there anybody you think who does not have a brain practically no just that we are not putting to use if you ever come across a tiger are you going to stare at the tiger as to what are my strengths how best i can capitalize on you will soon know if i want to do this then these are my challenges these are the challenges and there lies my weakness immediately you can find solution to that problem trust me every lock that you have in your house has got more than two keys yes or yes if a human can make more than two keys for every lock you think god has not made solutions for the problems that he has given you every problem has a solution provided you look for it and you will look for it only if you want to it's a very very game of convenience only when you want to so the whole question is do you want to do you want to then calculate and when you calculate you will also understand what are the opportunities today government of india has come up with such wonderful programs when in startups are encouraged there is so much of relaxation of taxes which government would take that kind of an initiative friends if we don't capitalize on this world will laugh at us they will say india is meant for ruling they are used 200 years we were ruled by some foreigners and prior to that by some kings and emperors we are so much used to being ruled that today we are not able to take the decisions for ourselves even when the best of the best policies come to us best of the best facilities are given to us options are given to us we are not able to capitalize on it and if we don't do that who is to be blamed we are to be blamed however like i said business is calculated risk do not just jump into business simply because today you had so many good speakers who came and who told you that yes entrepreneurship is the future of india yes tomorrow you will wear one suit and say yes i am going to be an entrepreneur 1000 rupees that is what it takes correct yes everybody has that 1000 rupees not a big deal but the big deal is your analysis if you know what your strengths are and if you have understood that this is an opportunity that i can capitalize on then you all have to do is work around the resources how do you try and go get those resources trust me today there is so much of liberalization in economy loans have become so very easy a few years back going to the us and studying there was the major challenge only a rich man's son i repeat son used to go because son is supposed to be an investment an asset he is going to return that investment correct what is an roi on a son a few lakhs a few crores that was the mindset of the people gradually it changed even daughter started going but again rich man's daughter today every common man son and daughter aims to go to us because loans have become that easy for every student today hardly any student is dependent on his parent because everybody has access to loans likewise 
today a lot of us have access to loans from government if we are not doing that there are some smart people who are doing if we are not working for our dreams we are working for somebody else they are the ones who are going to capitalize on this opportunity come back to india set up a business and then we see ourselves applying for that position there while all the while when you see that boss of yours you will think dude we went to the same college didn't we of course you did we had in the same classes didn't we of course we did we studied the same books didn't we of course you did so what was different what was different was that one decision that was taken by them and one decision that's taken by us one decision not to take that calculated risk it's always worth taking as long as it is calculated so the second thing that we do is take calculations calculations of our strengths of our weaknesses of our goals of the opportunities available and the best thing is we also understand the strengths of others we capitalize on the strengths of the others by collaborating collaborating is one thing that every entrepreneur is open to unless you are open to that you cannot think big because one person cannot reach the entire world they all need collaboration if today kfc's mcdonald's are here they are here because it's a franchisee model otherwise who in india would have known mr mcdonald who in india would eat a burger or a chicken from colonel sandlers we would not even know them simply because it's a franchisee model and they have collaborated today we say yum yummy but then the business has grown all over the world the third thing the third step is this courage that's reflecting there easier said than done while i was sitting there i heard a lot of people lot of times when the speaker asked they said courage i felt so good about it oh my god you know it takes courage to be an entrepreneur how much i loved the audience every time they said courage spelling of courage is simple having courage is a challenge most of the people give up their plans their wishes simply because they don't have the courage those who show courage also give up surprised how can people who show courage give up they give up because they are not consistent research have shown it takes 1000 days for a business to settle and all we fall short of is on 999th day is when we give up this is a set record we give up when we are very 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 close to our victory and this is not just in business even in olympics people have seen people give up when they are very very close to victory if only they take that little bit of extra little bit of extra makes them ordinary to extraordinary but that little bit is too much when you have a whole lot of pressure around you that's why it takes courage to take this kind of a decision and that is why it is a courageous step to continue to be in business now that is possible only when you have a backup if you have a backup only then you don't give up backup a lot of times the minute i say backup people say oh yes my father is multimillionaire my father is karodpati my mother can sponsor is that the backup i am talking of actually no backup comes from your education your education has to be very strong your foundation has to be strong and one thing that you has to be strong is your experience if you're trying to do something that you've never done before 
then you have to be very highly prepared for a flop show. There will be series of flops and in that case, your patience, consistency and courage is put to test. If you think you have that kind of courage, if you, have, if you think you have that kind of patience and if you think you can be consistent, go ahead. But if you think that you are one of those who can easily be manipulated, easily be influenced by the others, then please understand it is your experience that will help you. It is very important, whatever you want to do, first go and get your hands on experience. If you're absolutely new in the market, you are paying a price to learn every lesson. Like in your college, every year you have paid fees to learn something. But trust me, that fees went from your father's pocket. Am I right? So it was very easy, it didn't pinch. When it goes from your pocket, you will know, ah, there, it pinched. Sometimes it even boxes. Very, very hard. When the ground realities come and face you, you find it very, very hard to cope up. And that's where your experience matters. If you are experienced, one, you will not have those kind of difficulties of a absolute fresher. Because you already know how that market works. You already have developed a few strengths that you are now capitalizing on. Two, please remember Warren Buffet. He says, you should not be saving after whatever, I mean, you spend everything and whatever is left is what the savings is for people like us. But Warren Buffet says, you should first save and then what is left is what you spend. Please understand, there's a catch. A lot of us, whatever money we earn, first thing I want, oh my God, my first salary, the first thing I want is a smartphone, the best, sexiest phone. How much I have craved for an apple, now even I can show off. Six months later, I want a car. Why should I be traveling in a two-wheeler? I deserve air-conditioned car, don't I? I'm working so hard. And like I said, today loans are very, very easy. For everything and anything, you get loans. Just that we don't use loans for the right reason. We use loans to buy iPhone on EMI. We buy loans to buy car on EMI. We take loans in terms of credit card. We pay monthly installments on all our shopping, the branded stuff that we buy. And in the whole process, what happens? There is hardly any saving. And that is where Warren Buffet is different from us. He says he has always saved first. Every time he decides, okay, every month I'm going to save this much. He saves a major chunk of his money and from whatever is left is what he spends. Now imagine if you have worked in a company for a few years, let's say about four or five years to gather experience. You are rich in terms of experience. You are also rich in terms of bank balance. That's your backup. Don't count on your parents' money. That is their hard-earned money. How long do you want them to support you? You should be thankful we are born in India where education is sponsored by our parents. I'm sure with the exposure that we are having about Hollywood movies, we know that in the US, basic schooling up to 10th is sponsored by government. They only have government schools. Everybody goes to the same government school. And after that, if somebody wants to go for higher education, they pay for their own education. So that is why there is dignity of labor there because every rich man's son is throwing newspapers in the morning, is working as a librarian in the evening, is saving money. There are girls who do babysitting on the weekends when their friends are enjoying. They earn their money, they save their money and then they go for their universities and graduations. How lucky are we? Everything is served to us on a platter. Father says, here son, Take this money, take the bike. And son says, no, 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 not this bike. You have to buy me a car only, then I go to college. 
mother cooks the best of the best meal when it's uh, examination and the son still says i don't feel like studying there's so much of a noise here ac is not working i don't feel like studying lucky are we we throw so much of tantrums and lucky are we because we have this kind of parents who take our tantrums that is not how the world works in the other part of the world people have to earn their own money they have their own backup so your education at least be grateful that it's sponsored but thereafter don't count on the parents is money when i say backup have your own backup have your own experiences that you count on have your own savings that you count on and that will help you to do your calculations properly that will help you tell you how long can you survive and trust me the bigger the fund the casual you are it happens with everybody there ek aur popcorn phuta so when you have a big thick fat cushion you are very comfortable but as your savings keep going down then you suddenly realize the pain and that is when the real entrepreneur comes out that is when you know you cannot be sitting you have to be on the field you have to work hard you have to get new projects you have to convince people and suddenly under that pressure you outperform yourself that is when you are facing that tiger and you beat that tiger in that running race there is competition there is that fear of rejection but then there is passion for your mission that you have started and you cannot let that go so that is when you really really start working and then you think back where was this dynamic guy all this while that dynamic guy was in the comfort of his savings and that is why i didn't pinch him now that there was this pinch he starts working my request to you is you don't do the mistakes that other entrepreneurs have been doing learn from our experiences if you have that cushion don't wait for that cushion to be exhausted don't run at the 11th hour run at the first star in that case you are stronger than us you are stronger than our generation because from the very first day that savings become your capital and you are richer than us so your weaknesses have suddenly become your strengths that is a smart move when you can convert your weaknesses into your strengths that is when you are smart and it is always a smart move that takes you to success so remember learn from others experiences and don't be very lavish at least initially you don't have to prove anything to anybody everybody understands it's a startup they will give you enough time time and again people come in the society and they ask you what happened still struggling hi what happened didn't get that client you said you are quite hopeful about it are that client also rejected you this happens practically every day everywhere it is not just in terms of your entrepreneurship or your business or your startup for that matter anything and everything that you do even if you are applying for a job people will come back and ask what happened you didn't get selected half the time you don't know whether you are selected or not but they come to a conclusion that you are not selected and that kills your confidence avoid this kind of people they are the bigger weaknesses the weaknesses that we have in ourselves we can convert it into strengths any day we want at the snap of our finger one morning you can decide that hereafter i am not going to do these things hereafter i am not going to get scared of excel sheet i can decide that in fact i had decided that that is when i learned how to make excels and make proposals otherwise i always used to count on my team one morning i decided is that a rocket science what gives me so much of a shiver it's after all an excel cut copy paste the mantra always works correct yeah so it did work i had to find some shortcuts i learned those things that are our weaknesses we can always cover but these kind of weak people around us who gather around us all the time they are the ones that we cannot manage if you are surrounded by those people 
you are bound to sooner or later become one like them avoid them seriously avoid them every time you think of doing something big these are the people who will come and show you they'll say this is the reality you are not meant for that avoid them it is worth taking those calculated risks and it is worth showing that courage the next thing if you remember every time that small little chap used to ask mom what's up there his mother kind of shoved him off and said nothing but then that guy every time in that movie every day in and day out tried to climb that rock did he yes there was some calling he always thought that he's meant to go up there was something that actually pulled him there was some force that pulled him one day he sees a mask and he understood that mask is of a beautiful girl he falls in love with that girl even without seeing that was the day his passion was ignited earlier he was only curious but that day he got passionate he tried harder this time and this time he succeeded your passion when it is you know uh, it is together clubbed with courage consistency and your curiosity that is what will take you to success one question to you did the movie end when he found his lady love no he climbed that mountain only to meet his lady love correct but did it end there no it moved on it moved on to a kingdom where he was given a task rather he took that as an ownership just because he was passionate about that girl he took her mission as his mission and when he did that mission he achieved that mission or rather i'd say when he accomplished that mission he understood he belonged to that kingdom yes or yes did he know about that kingdom in the first place did he know that he is the prince of that kingdom did he know that he belongs there did he know that he has a right to that throne he did not know nor do you know nor do i know where i belong today you don't know you are looking very very superficially if you are talking about entrepreneurship having one business earning a few lakhs earning a few crores is just good but you don't know when you achieve that your goals are going to be far far more ahead of what you are aiming now the bars are going to rise you don't know that there is a kingdom waiting for you it is waiting for each one of us and only those who see it and consistently go for it get it those who are happy with their love life you know this was my mission i climbed the mountain only to find my lady love and here my lady love i'll sing a duet the movie can very royally end and they lived heavy, uh, happily ever after but that is not what it was it was the bahubali one movie is not enough so there was one beginning and then there is one ending and in the end we all know even before watching that he will become the final emperor correct today here on this seat you know that you are going to have a throne for yourself you are going to succeed and the simple little things that you will follow are these few c's that we are talking about three days successful entrepreneurs have come and have shared their experiences with you each one of you is inspired by one or the other or the more the reason you have so many people coming in and talking is because you never know something that one person says will hit your heart will hit bang on and your life will change thereafter your life is never going to be the same 
but who is that one person going to be which is that one statement going to be that even gampa sir did not know and that is why he called so many eminent speakers that you never know who will connect with which of these students and will have that passion evolved the last of it when you start you start with your curiosity when you end you only end when you conquer the man who came to kill him screamed his name out he bowed did he bow who's this man here on the screen kattappa a man who was not cut by anybody who never bow except his lord he bow for this hero and he bow because of his courage consistency and finally he was able to conquer you and i both sail in the same boat it is just that i got into that boat a few years before you did but every word i said is out of my heart felt experiences there was nobody to tell me all these things i come from a typical gujarati family when i said i want to work 18 years ago when i said i want to do job my entire family looked at me with wide eyes open girl gujarati community you will go out and you will work i said yes trust me it was not easy <laughs> definitely not easy every day i had to prove my worth sad i was the youngest in the family the pampered one and they always thought i remained the same even today my sister from mumbai calls and she thinks i am the still same little young girl she will give me a whole lot of instructions that i should do and i should not do because for a mother and an elder sister you will always remain young they don't know that you have conquered the world when i said i told my father that i want to be a trainer and i will start my own company he said business more than welcome business runs in our blood what does not run in our blood is your training i don't understand what training are you talking about you think you will earn your bread and butter out of it some multinational company is paying you a thick fat check why aren't you happy with it because indians don't understand trainings he said but surprisingly today i have 1500 indians listening to me and i wish my father was here to see this because today of course he understand yes indians also appreciate training when people used to ask my father what does your daughter do he said she does some trainings she is some software training and half of the time people thought soft skills training is equal to software training so they started respecting me and i used to tell them no i don't deserve that respect i don't deserve that salutation because i am not a software trainer i am a soft skills trainer it took me 3 years to help my community understand what is soft skills what is leadership coaching what do i do but today they understand if it took me this while when you come up with a novel idea i am sure people are going to talk going to talk against what you want to do but then the choice is yours do you want to flow with the water great absolutely fine flow with the flow if you think that there is scope for job opportunities are many 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 american companies are opening they are giving you thick fat check wow as soon as you get the job you get a loan you get a home loan you get a car loan you get credit cards you get a beautiful wife with dowry without dowry that is of course your cho choice 40 years you have two beautiful children one own house one nice car life is settled is that what you call life is settled if that is what is settled for you perfectly fine go ahead but if there is that i want a little more you know dil mange kuch more then yes try entrepreneurship it is really really what taking the entire world in your stride it takes a while but the catch there is do not give up giving up is not an option only when you try and try again 
is when you succeed. And at that note, I would like to conclude. Thank you so much for listening to me. Wow, extraordinary, wonderful. Thank you, sir. How do you feel? Come on, show you. Thank you. Your mobile number, your mobile number, email ID. Sure. My dear friends, come on, cheer up. One, two, one, two, three. Thank you so I request uh, Shruti ma'am, please be in our all impact classes in future. Oh, I'm so honored, sir. Thank you so much. I would always love to come back to you guys. Hello, on the class, oh. Madam English Lamadna Tunda, Telugu Lamadna Tunda. Telugu English Lamadna Tunda. Aap jobi baat kare naam ko sab kuch samal mein hai. Thank you. That was one of my biggest fears because I don't speak Telugu. I thought. Half of you will not understand and you are going to curse me. But thank you for listening to me so patiently. I hope I was able to add some value in your life. Thank you so much. My cell number is 917-7884-94. I must confess, although I'm giving you a cell number that is on uh, Gampa sir's request, I am hardly available on cell phone because all the time I'm training, if you see my bag is right there, my cell phone is not with me right now. So the best way to reach me is either ping me on Facebook. I am, uh, you can find me as Sruti Mashru, S-R-U-T-I, S-R-U-T-I, and my last name is spelled as M-A-S-H, are you? Shruti Mashru is my name. I have a fan page. You can like my page. You can stay connected with me. Any queries, I'll be more than happy to, you know, refer back to you. But please be a little patient with me because I take a little longer to reply. I'm usually traveling and in training, so consider that. Don't expect a very quick reply. I definitely reply. There has not been a single ping that I have not replied to so far. I always reply, just that I take a little longer kindly tolerate with me. You can also reach me at my mail ID. My personal mail ID is Shruti Mashru, spelled the same way, S-R-U-T-I-M-A-S-H-R-U, at gmail.com. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Thank